Hey everyone, Christy Barkley here. I am going to talk to you a little bit today about habits. So I am almost done listening to Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, Cause probably three or four different things that I listened to or training I heard um, kept referring back to Atomic Habits. And so I got to thinking, you know, really, I, I feel like when things like that just keep happening and over and over again, then it's like God's way of saying, hey, dummy, listen to this. So, or get the book. Um, and so I actually probably will get the book also so that I can highlight and underline things that I can keep going back to because Audible is great because I listen to it when I work out or when I'm walking or cleaning. Um, but... I feel like this is a book that I'm going to go back to pretty regularly or with my teams in um, teaching them really good, consistent habits. So one of the things, I'm just going to kind of go through the four-step loop, which um, tons and tons of research, basically he's come up with um, what he calls um, the four laws of behavior change based on habits. So it's a four-step loop um, that underlies all human behavior. First is a cue, second is a craving, third is a response, and fourth is a reward. So with that loop in mind, um, he uh, created the four laws of behavior change. So cue, uh, make it obvious, craving, make it attractive, three, um, the third law, make it easy, and the fourth law, make it satisfying. So let's talk a little bit about the first law. First of all, um, he wants you to make a habits scorecard. So what does that mean? Writing down all of your current habits and being aware of them. So you would begin that the second you wake up. So all of us have different habits. Um, when your eyes open and your alarm goes off, do you reach over for your phone um, and start looking at social media or emails? Or do you look at your phone and maybe read scriptures? Or do you just turn the alarm off if you're using your phone as your alarm and get up and start moving? Or um, go put on a pot of coffee? Or meditate or go to the bathroom like literally take inventory for about a week of all of your habits and you'll find that you pretty much do the same things over and over and over again and you maybe don't even realize um because what we're gonna do is something called habit stacking so if there are habits um that you do that you know are really probably not going to change and they're not bad for you. Um, we're going to create a um, habit stacking. So, and it needs to be obvious. So your cue needs to be totally, totally obvious so that it gets your attention and signals what you're going to do next. So you're going to want to, again, use habit stacking. And that looks like I will new habit when I old habit. So that's habit stacking. So for instance, um, for me, something that I do every day is, um, not every day, something that I do mostly four days a week is take Andrew to swim practice. And what I do during that hour is typically willy nilly. Sometimes I read a book that I enjoy. Sometimes I get work done. Sometimes I respond to messages. Sometimes I chat on the phone with my best friend, but here's what I would like to do. I am going to now because this summer he will have, he will practice five days a week. So I have decided that starting Monday, when his five-day week practice begins, when I arrive at swim practice 
and put Andrew's swim cap on because that's my cue for he's done with me. Once I put his swim cap on, I will sit down with my list and start reaching out to potentials and following up with um, current customers or ambassadors or um, following up with people that I've just been in discussions with and maybe haven't chatted in a little while or follow up with friends. Um, but building strong relationships. That's what I am going to do during that hour. So um, my cue is Andrew's swim cap. And then my steps are, I will already have my list ready. You're going to see where I'm going to add that. What do you need? Real life. So, all right, let's talk about another example. When I exercise, I will listen to a training of some sort. So, obviously, I would not be um, launching to the things or trying to share a lot of the knowledge that I've gained over the past how many ever years if I didn't love to learn. So sometimes I go to the gym and I watch something on Netflix. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I chat with friends. Here's what though. Now, because between summer and um, getting all of this launched and all the new things that I need to get done, I need to be really smart about it and not, again, willy-nilly with my habits. So um, when I go to like Pilates or yoga, obviously I can't put my headphones in and do um, something. But on the days of the week where I walk into Powerhouse Gym and I scan my card and check in, as soon as I put my stuff in the locker, I will um, start listening to an audible or a training because that's something that's important to me and it will help me grow in other ways. So what can you do during that time? Um, he said something that he wanted to start doing. He wanted to increase his push-ups. So first he said, um, when I, when I go to lunch, I will do 10 push-ups. But he said it got pretty gray because sometimes he ate lunch at his desk and sometimes he went out to lunch and sometimes he skipped lunch or sometimes like it, it just, he wasn't very strategic because it wasn't a very, very specific cue. So then he changed it to when I stand up from my chair to get food for lunch. So it's regardless of where it is or who is going for whatever, I will do 10 push-ups. So you have to be really, really specific with your cue so that there's no chance of your missing it. Um, and design your environment so that the cues are obvious and visible. All right, let's move on to the second law, which is craving and making it attractive. Oh, let me not leave out the idea of, um, I'm double checking to make sure that it goes along with um, the first law. Nope, it's the beginning of the second law. So make it attractive. So here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, temptation bundling is one thing. So. He, so for example, let's say you really, really love The Bachelorette. So what he would say is, when you work out on the treadmill or bike or whatever you're doing, that's when you get to watch The Bachelorette. Like if you're, if you're saying that you don't have time, that's not true. I've said this so many times, but everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. It's how do you prioritize your time and how intentional are you with your time and what do you put in place to get everything done? Some days are going to be crazy busier than others, but if you were fitting in watching TV or um, going out to lunch with friends because you know if you go out to lunch with your friends you're going to be there for an hour to an hour and a half you know if you grab lunch at your desk you literally are done eating your sandwich in 15 minutes right 
Yes, you have to eat lunch, but how much time do you need to spend at lunch? So just being really strategic um, and intentional with your time. So consider temptation bundling. If you want to do something that really doesn't add value to your life or help you um, get closer to your goals, then do it while you're doing something that is good for you. Um, so let's say, let's say he also talks about um, making it attractive. So be a part of a group that is currently doing something that is something that you want to do. So if, um, if you want to grow your business and, um, surround yourself with people that are growing their business, go to networking opportunities, um, be around other people who are trying to achieve great things also, you know, so a networking opportunity, it's probably going to be people from all different industries, but they're all trying to get to know new people and expand their network and learn about what other people do. And they wouldn't be doing that if they weren't trying to achieve more. If you're in an industry like I am, like network marketing, um, be in a group or around a team that constantly lifts you up and inspires you to do more and gives you ideas of how to do things more. So for instance, in network marketing, lots of times there will be, um, and I think even when I worked for the Nashville Predators, I, I sat in an opposite cube of the ticket salespeople and they would have power hours. And so he would, uh, the manager would come in and go, okay, it's 9 a.m., everything down, phones up. And they always had to have a phone on their ear. And for one hour, all of those ticket salespeople did nothing but make phone calls, right? So another thing is if you're not in an office, you work from home like I do, is to jump on a Zoom power hour where um, everybody interested in growing their business and, and staying focused to reach out for one hour, they join together and they agree to jump on at the same time for an hour and they just go and they cheer each other on. And if somebody's looking frustrated or they've gotten a no or anything like that, they're just like cheer each other on, like be a part of a group. Same thing. It simple terms, jogging, you know, you, I, I was always a solo runner but every thursday there's a um a locally owned running store right down here um next to me and so every thursday night they meet at i think six o'clock and i see them all run across the big bridge towards the street and it's attractive where they're going they all jog for a few miles to a bar or whatnot and they have a few beers and they all jump back but there's so many different paces the point is they all just share the desire to run. And so they do it together and it just makes it more fun, more attractive and easier. So, um, and having a motivational ritual, like do something you enjoy immediately before a difficult habit. So if reaching out to people scares you, then do something you really like beforehand. Listen to your favorite song, you know, say your affirmations. Like do something that's going to help you do the habit that scares you a little bit. All right. Third law of response. Make it easy. This is the actual behavior or habit that you perform. So you want to reduce friction. Decrease the number of steps between you and your good habits. Um, get the environment primed. Um, so here's the thing. When I sit down at my desk, even though I can hear my kids laughing and you probably can and wrestling and doing whatever they're doing in there. Like I am so focused when I am sitting at my desk, getting things done as opposed to laying on my couch, feet up on the coffee table, answering messages on my phone, which I can do. Like I can do most of my business from my phone. And with today's technology, most of you can as well. But I'm not as focused. I'm glancing up at the TV or I'm looking around at the laundry I need to do or, oh, looks like the dog needs to go for a walk. But if I sit right here at this desk, I am focused. Also, when I'm filming, there is a sign on my door that says, 
do not enter. Clearly that didn't work today. But the other day when I was filming, when I was done, I went out and Andrew said, that sign's a great idea. I almost busted in on you while you were filming, which most of you are used to, but I'm trying to minimize some of that. Um, but you can do the same thing even if you're not filming. Like, create a sign. You know, if you don't have an office, if you don't have space that you can go into, like during the summer, like I said, this is Sophia's space. But she knows she, the agreement was for her to have her own room in here. My office, it had to be cleaned every day so that I could work from it. And she has stuck to it. And it's been great. But let's say you don't have that. Let's say um, your bedroom is, or your closet is your only space. Put a sign up that says, you know, don't kill each other. If you got kids, mom will be back out in 30 minutes. Like this is at 1030 AM. I will be available again and let them know in advance, but have a sign on the door that that reminds them, Hey, mom's working. And you can do that in segments and there's a good chance none of your children will die. And if they're close to dying, they will bust in, but give them something to do. Make it easy for you to get your stuff done. Um, so let's talk about, um, so that's just making it easy, making it easy to do the habits that you know you need to do to get the end result, um, whatever that is, whatever the goal is that you're working towards. Um, and for me right now, the goal I'm working towards is to accomplish these habits that I know I need to do to reach my bigger goal each day right? I know if I do these certain things, if I reach out to five people, if I follow up with five people, if I um, post well, if I um, talk to people in person and go out and meet more people, um, those things will get me closer and closer to larger goals that I have. Um, automate your habits. So, he even gave the suggestion. He said that there's one guy that only uses his phone for, um, he uses only does emails on his computer, only does social media on his phone. And what did he only does? Um, there was something else that he did on his iPad. So just being really specific about what you do, where, and on, with all of the technology we have these days, there's so many options. But if you know that you're not at your computer, you may be able to dedicate more time to your family if, every, if you're not looking at your phone for emails. Like if you've left the office and you really want to give your family two hours a night, but you know if you have that phone in your hand, which you likely do, and you have your email notifications turned on, your family is not going to get that two hours. You're going to constantly be pulled away from whatever your children are trying to say or show you or just enjoy your undivided attention. Even if that means you guys are watching America's Got Talent together, but you're side by side, you're watching it, you're engaging, and you're not staring at your phone. That's huge because what you're teaching your kids is that that time with them is valuable because I have older kids now and I would love to tell them, stay off your phone, put your phone down. But when their dad has a phone glued to their hand, it's hard for me to tell my children, you don't need your phone. What could possibly be happening on your phone right now? Um, so you are also an example in your home um, if you do have kids. Okay. Fourth law, almost done, the reward, making it satisfying. If there is a reward associated with a behavior that feels good, then we have a reason to repeat it in the future. So if I, for two weeks straight at swim practice, use that dedicated hour, so five hours a week, to only reaching out or following up with people, and then the next few weeks after I've been doing that every day, I start to get more and more people on my team and more interest in my product. That's a really great reward. Like that's what I intended, right? That's what I wanted to happen. So now what? Now I see this is a great habit. I will keep this up because this doesn't mess with my day at all, right? I have to be at swim. 
I have to. But if using that time intentionally to reach out and follow up results in much better numbers for me at the end of the month, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep doing it. Um, also, um, use a habit tracker. I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to create one um, and share it on the page. Can you, I guess you can see this. It's tiny. You can't see his tiny little boxes, but basically, is that blurry or would that zoom in? It's a habit tracker. So right here in this column, and you can do anything. If you're really electronic people, there's probably an app for this. I'm a visual handwriter person. So I'm going to create one. And my habits will be my exercise. It will be um, how many people I want to reach out to. It will be doing a, a training. It will be um, learning myself. It will be write. Because I really want to write a book, guess what? I've got to start writing. I haven't actually written anything. Um, and then here's what he says. Like, don't break the chain. Every day you do that habit, check, 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 check. You're creating a chain, right? So I couldn't say this in any better words than he did. So I'm just going to read this to you. Use a habit tracker. Don't break the chain is a powerful mantra. Don't break the chain of sales calls and you'll be a successful, you'll build a successful book of business. Don't break the chain of workouts and you'll get fit faster than you'd expect. Don't break the chain of creating every day and you'll end up with an impressive portfolio. Habit tracking is powerful because it leverages multiple laws of behavior change. It simultaneously makes a behavior obvious, because you're writing it down, attractive and satisfying. Because how great is it when you look and, um, sorry about that. How, uh, how satisfying is it when you look and you've created a chain? Um, I was just looking at how he, did this. Anyway, I'm going to create one. I'm going to put it on there. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, really, this is what, I don't know how many minutes I've gone, but the book is seven hours long. So you still could learn a ton. You could follow, um, just a reminder, this was all from Atomic Habits. James Clear, he is on Instagram, on Facebook. So really, really great tips. And I feel like nothing may be strangely out of the ordinary, but as a reminder, like I've never thought of habit stacking or, um, or bundling my, um, temptation bundling. If there's something that I want to do, that's really not great. I need to do it with something good. Um, so Anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. I hope um, that you found some value out of it. Share it with your friends. Let me know if you have any questions. Go to the Facebook page for um, the Do The Things Facebook page, and I will put on there just a cheat sheet of how to create a good habit, and I'm gonna have to build a habit tracker template is what I'm gonna have to do. Um, so have a great day and thanks for tuning in. Bye.